was lame. I need more. Ow! That was lame. I need more. I found more. Today's video is sponsored by Policy Genius. If you have anyone in your life who relies on your income, you need life insurance. Especially for people like me who like a little bit of adrenaline. Policy Genius makes it easy to get life insurance done and done right. Life insurance gives me the peace of mind that if anything were to happen to me, my loved ones would have the cushion to pay for things like mortgage, education, and everyday expenses. Typically, life insurance gets more expensive as you get older. The sooner you lock in a policy, the more you save. Policy Genius has no hidden fees and will never sell your information to other companies. They have thousands of five star reviews across Trustpilot and Google. Getting started is easy. Click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com slash off the ranch and answer a few questions about yourself. In minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Their licensed experts will help you understand your options and ensure you apply for the right policy. Policy Genius works for you, not the insurance company, so you can trust them to offer unbiased advice and help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. When you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling for free. Thanks to Policy Genius for sponsoring this episode of Off the Ranch. Head to policygenius.com slash off the ranch to get your free quote and see how much you can save. Oh, oh I did the ad in the tree. Oh, hi, welcome to Off the Ranch. Uh, a lot of people have been asking where these things have been. For those who have no idea who would be asking this, it's because you haven't watched the channel long enough. This was the bed that came on Earl, my Ram 2500, which is actually right there in between that other Ram and that Tahoe. But we wanted a bed that had a bunch more utility boxes on the side, so we took this one off, put a new bed on, and I still had this because I always thought it'd be cool to have another flatbed someday, and so I kind of kept it around. I don't really need it anymore, and you probably already know why, because I bet it's in the thumbnail, and you'll see in just a second. But today, something happened to where I don't need this bed anymore. This is actually a really cool system that's been sitting in my barn for two years. It's really cool if you go camping all the time, or just at least once a month. I just found out I don't go camping once a month. And when I do, I want to go with all my kids and they don't all fit in this. This is a tent. It actually is really nice. It looks like it's super old. It's only three years old. I've camped in it probably five times and it's, it actually is black. It's really nice. If I, I really should have, you know, cleaned it, but oh my gosh, this is not working at all. But you can see it has a shiny black finish. It actually, I'm doing a really bad job trying to sell this. So you can go check out what it is, roostents.com. It's about three, actually it's probably almost four years old is when I got it. And it's on a Leitner Designs rack. And this fits a first gen Raptor. I don't know what else it fits. I don't know if it fits second gen Raptors. I don't know if it fits regular F-150s. But that rack fits first gen Raptors. Um, this roof tent will go on other racks as well. It has yeah, some of these little bars under here. And then there's a couple boxes as well as a gas tank on there. And I'm actually keeping those. Those don't go with it. Um, anyway, that's for sale. This is for sale. 
and they're here at Bunker Branding in Bernie, Texas. Local pickup only. We're not shipping these things because we're not crazy. And I put them right here on the asphalt. So we can just pick them up with a forklift and set them on your trailer or your truck if you need. If you're going to put it on a Raptor, you just come show up and we'll set it on your Raptor for you. Yeah, they're for sale. I'll put an email in the description below. Jenna's going to hate me because she's going to get a bunch of emails. Uh, I'll also put prices down there. For now, prices are firm. Uh, I'll put fair prices. And uh, I don't know what else this thing fits, but it came off a 2012 Ram 2500 single rear wheel. But it's as wide as my uh, dually flatbed. Do you guys want to see that? Check this out. Wait, 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 wait. Let's epic edit it first. <laughs> Did you buy another first gen Dodge Ram Cummins turbo diesel? Uh, mm, 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 I don't think so. Um, nope. You got me mistaken for somebody else. I definitely did not do that. I may have done that, but I didn't mean to do that. Listen, I got tricked, okay? Here's the deal. I wasn't actively looking for another truck. I had considered getting another work truck, but I was not, M Meredith, I was not actively looking this one found me it did it's not a lie like last time this one that's true this time uh some dude in my hometown reached out and was like he just sent an email he's like hey i got a truck that you might want and i was like i get those kind of emails all the time and i looked at it, i was like oh hold up that's first gen that doesn't have a Cummins. Oh, that does have a Cummins in it. Okay, well, it's probably not a manual. It is a manual. Well, it's probably not four-wheel drive. It is four-wheel drive? Well, it's, I already got, you know, I, I don't need, I don't need that. I need maybe a dually. It's a dually too? Well, it probably doesn't have air, AC. You need AC and take, it's got air conditioning, what? So here's the, here's the situation. It's a 1993 Dodge Ram W. 350 which means it's a one ton dual rear wheel it has the cummins turbo diesel 5.9 liter 12 valve engine in it which as you guys know i'm a huge fan of uh, it has a five speed transmission which correct me if i'm wrong i think that's called a is that a nv 5600 i think uh, it's a five speed manual which is cool um it is a four wheel drive and it's a dual rear wheel, it's a dually. And I think you, uh, you Cummins guys will have to let me know if you see anything. I think it's factory stock. Everything looks pretty stock to me. I don't know if they had these covers on them, on the uh, individual valve covers in 1993, but they may have. Um, that turbo looks fairly small, like a factory turbo. Um, in 1991, so let me just start from the beginning. This is my third sort, yeah, this is my third 12 valve. Cummins. So I first bought, I think it was a 91, maybe 92. It was a single rear wheel, four wheel drive, and that one was a fire truck for a little bit for me. And then I planned on making it into the Barracuda, but then a dude messaged me. He was like, Matt, that was my first truck. I haven't seen it in years and I want to buy it back. I sold it because I didn't have enough money to keep it, but now I do and I want that truck back. And so I was like, that's a cool story. So I hit him up and said, yeah, come get it. So Dude came and bought his first truck back from me. So then I'm left without a 12 valve. What's a man to do? I found another 12 valve out in West Texas. This dude had taken the body off of one because he wanted to use the body on a newer uh, drivetrain Cummins. And so all he had left was the engine, transmission, uh, frame, suspension, just a whole drive line. And uh, it was a dually as well. I took it, it was great, and we turned that thing into the Barracuda. That was my second 12 valve. And then this thing came along, so now I'm, uh, this is my third 12 valve. And here's, here's the reasoning, Mayor, why we need this. Um, we have Earl, Earl's a great work truck, but we have a lot of workers now. The bunker's full of people. We have, the, I don't know, I think I have like 50 employees now. And there's been times when some workers are taking Earl to go deliver stuff in town, to go get parts, to go get machinery, things like that that we need. And another worker's like, hey, 
you know, this machine's down at the bunker and we need it. We need a truck right now. And I'm like, well, my truck's being used for something. Earl's used for something. My Ford's used for something. You're just gonna have to wait till Earl gets back. And so this will be great, Meredith, because now we have another truck to get stuff around. In my head, it was gonna, it was gonna make more sense than that. God, that is a teeny tiny little turbo. Look at, look at little baby cute turbo. That's hilarious. In all honesty though, um, I do need it. I think I can call it a need. And it also, this is true, Mare. Mare's my wife, for those who don't know. She is not a fan of me buying trucks, you know, once a week. This thing will go up in value, guaranteed. Cummins guys, back me up. Anything with a 12 valve Cummins in it is gonna be worth more in the future. And this thing, it's been a work truck its whole life, as you can tell, and we're gonna keep working it. That's a good little truck. Uh, the floors are great. There's no rust through the floors. You can see it's got some damage here and some surface rust, but we'll just touch that up. Uh, no rust through anywhere that I've found. Uh, it is a very, actually rust-free truck. And it came from up north where usually trucks get rustier, but I think it was just used on a farm and not used on like salty roads. Because from what I can see, there's some surface rust, but there are no holes. There is no deep rust. I think I just got myself a freaking good truck. You guys let me know though, are these springs supposed to be as flat as they are? Or are these just sagging after 30 years of weight carrying on them? These up front too, they look very, very flat and not arched. Does this thing need some new springs on it? Probably would help. We are gonna use this thing for towing and hauling heavy loads. It is a one ton dually with a diesel. And so we're gonna use it as it was intended to be used. This will not be a mat, mod this thing up and get a thousand horsepower out of this truck. This is gonna be a work truck. I'm not making it factory restoration. We're not making it clean. What is with these mirrors? Why did they need a freaking three foot span on this mirror support bracket? What did they think? This is not supposed to survive a hurricane, but it would. It's got four posts and like eight feet of piping total to hold this one little mirror on it. Doesn't flip out. I don't know. That's that seems overkill. The whole door is taken up by a mirror. I just realized that. Good job, Dodge. I was just sitting here thinking about how every single one of these videos where I get a new vehicle, I feel like I must explain to you why I got it. I don't know why that is. Like, it's like I know I shouldn't get it, but I just want to, and then I like have to make it right by you guys. Be like, here, here's, here's how it makes sense. And by mirror. And maybe I'm just using you guys for practice because Mare has not seen this truck yet. Uh, she actually just left town today. Um, she left town to go up to North Texas for a couple days for her market, for Link Active stuff, and so she just left town, and um, mm -hmm. I instantly bought a truck. Literally 45 minutes after she left town, I met up with this guy. That was not by design, Mare. It just happened that way, totally. You know what's cool, though? Uh, let change the subject. <laughs> it's this engine. So actually, 1993, I don't know if it was the first year, but it was one of the first years that they had they had intercooled engines. So this one actually has a little more horsepower than my 1991, because my 1991, from the factory, not now, because mine has an intercooler now and it has a lot more horsepower, but from the factory, my 91 did not have an intercooler, and this 93 does have an intercooler. You can see this big pipe, instead of coming over there from the turbo, it dives down here and goes up to an intercooler that's up in front of the radiator right there. But otherwise, still a 12 valve Cummins. It does not have a big P-pump on the side of it, so it doesn't have the huge P-pump over here, which that's fixable. No, Matt, no, we don't have to do we don't have to mod this. It works fine, Matt. We don't need more power. Actually, check this out. This is cool. This thing only has 74,000 miles on it. And I think that's correct because it doesn't look worn out. It seems like a really nice truck. I mean, unless they went through and redid everything in here, which I doubt, I think this is all original dash, door panels, seat has a cover on it but probably original seat under this cover and then the body all looks pretty good i assume it has a flatbed because of that damage on the side over here i bet you they also took out the bed with whatever they hit here and then they put this flatbed on so i think pretty good truck all in all hey i was going to show you guys more of the truck but clint and jenna just came and got me and they we got some got some important business to into and then we'll drive it after that. I'll be I'll be right back. Hey Jenna. Hey. I may or may not have told the audience that um, 
They can email you about buying uh, the flatbed oh my gosh. and the tent. Um, so we're about to have like 300 emails. Yeah, I told them local pickup only. <laughs> They can't talk to you in a in a mean way. That's be nice only. Extra nice. Um, yeah, I won't be there. Also, yeah, you have to talk to. Actually, she's probably gonna send someone else out. She won't even. She doesn't know anything about those I things. I might come out. We'll see how I'm feeling. We'll send Clint out. See, so he'll be mean to you. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch was great. Thanks for asking. I had nachos. Uh, the good thing about taking like an hour and a half break from. Hanging out with you guys is this thing had plenty of time to get cold because I had driven it this morning. It's cool outside right now. So we get to hear a cold start on the Cummins. I guess you guys probably want to hear it from outside, don't you? There, sorry, there's no place for a set of camera, so we're just going to do it right here. So let it warm up a little bit. All right. There's also no uh, clutch. Uh, what's the word for you have to have the clutch in to start? I don't know. There we go. Dude. Freaking Cummins, like a boss, is starting right up. You guys want to go for a drive? Dang it, I meant to pull the brake release, so I just popped the hood. This one, got it. I test drove it with him earlier today, and it did really good. So, I'm not too worried. So, first gear, super, super short in this thing. Uh, like, that's pretty much the end of it. I'm not even reading uh, above 10 miles an hour yet. I'm going like four miles an hour and then you need second gear. He was like, I usually just start in second gear everywhere I go because first gear is just a crawler gear. For instance, let me let me slow down, go back down to first. All right, we are in first gear right there. Hold on, some Tesla, oh my gosh, there's just Teslas everywhere. <laughs> need to get a Cummins. All right, we're in first gear. We're just rolling. This thing also has a transfer case that I can put it at four low. And I tried it earlier, four wheel drive does work and it goes super slow. So yeah, I got nothing on the pedals down here. Just idling along, very slow. Let's go ahead and put that in four low. That's where that should be. And first, all right, so now we're in four low. I got nothing on the pedals again, as you can see it just, just creeps. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's so slow. All right. Should we ghost ride the whip? <laughs> Obviously, we should ghost ride the whip. So it's called ghost riding. You just get out. I'm not gonna ghost ride it too much further because it's probably illegal. But we did just ghost ride the first gen Cummins. Back in too high. Let's get this thing out on the road. See what she can do. Man, I like this single cab. Not having back seats behind you, you can see everything. All right, first gear is tiny. Let's just get out of that and get to second. You can hear zero turbo in this. I also don't like feel it. I guess I can kind of feel a turbo. I've never really driven a stock 12 valve. The first one I got that I drove around a decent amount was not stock. It had a few things done to it. So this is new to me, but it's got some get up and go for a big one ton truck. I like it. And it's nice and quiet too. Like, my other one was pretty loud and like rattly and it was lifted. This one is loud, the windows don't feel super great, but it's not, not nearly as loud and rattly as another one. It's a pretty good truck. I'm a happy man. Let's try out the brakes real quick. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even slam on them. I just pushed kind of decently hard. We're great. Probably need to rebuild a little bit of the steering components here because as you can see, there's some slop, but we are not actually turning the truck right now. Currently running her 50 miles an hour down the highway. I did get up to 70 earlier. Felt, uh, it didn't love 70, but it wasn't bad. It does drive 70 and it's a windy day. This wind is loud. These window seals don't do as good as they used to. Temperature is nice and low. Oil pressure, nice are gonna get why I bought this truck. They're they're gonna just look at this thing and think, that's just an old work truck. Like, why does Matt think he needs that? I'm not worried about what people think. 
I'm worried about what makes me happy. And this, oh shoot, it's, hold up, hold up. Where are you going? <laughs> this thing makes me happy. And actually we do need it as a work truck. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Check this out. All right, I don't know why my brake and ABS lights are on. The brakes seem to work fine. My parking brake is off, so I'm not, I'm not sure why it has a parking brake light on, but this is cool. So this was in my other one as well, but I never really knew what it did because it didn't work. But watch, when I shift this into four wheel drive, the light comes on. Check that out. Two wheel drive, four wheel drive, two wheel drive. Okay, you get it, it's cool. drive. I forgot. Four wheel drive. I mean basically six wheel drive. There she is. My beautiful 5.9 12 valve 1993 Dodge. Ram W350. You guys haven't even seen the engine running with the hood up yet. I guess I should show you guys that. The best part about these old tractor motors is turning them off because the whole truck gets a shimmy. Watch this. Because it's freaking just a tractor motor. I mean, this, this, these are so simple. That's why people love the 12 valve Cummins because you need like one electric wire and one fuel line and the engine will run. It's so freaking simple. Stuff does not break commonly and when it does, it's really easy to fix. It's just a very reliable and simple motor, which is why I, this is my third one, I guess. Yeah, mm, they're so cool. This truck. You will not see a build series on this truck. Don't get your hopes up that we're restoring or making something crazy out of this. Uh, I might do some maintenance stuff. We might put some springs on it, but this is by and large going to be a work truck used by my employees. You won't see me driving it a whole lot. You'll see it in the background a lot. You'll see this thing off and on, but by and large, this thing is a work truck. So anyway, hope you guys like my uh, new W350. Please do me a favor. No need to tell Mayor, so just don't do it. She'll see it eventually, but I'll be like, I don't think that's my truck. That's probably Chocolate's truck. That's probably not, that's not mine. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for watching. I love you. And I'll see you next time. Oh. Hey, what camera is that number? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell Mayor.